Good morning. Uh, once again, I'm following Nick. It's a hard act to follow. Um, but this time, I'm not going to be uh, uh, unkind to him, um, as I was at the Fast Service College. I'm going to talk today about something very dear to my heart and something that meshes in with what Nick said about uh, the tourist industry, about the, the importance and value of the tour of tourism as a, an economic uh, powerhouse. Um, I've done a lot of work over the years uh, on hotels and hotel fire safety. I've also done a lot of work on heritage protection. And I think this presentation merges the two because my message here essentially is that, uh, that many buildings can find new uses by being converted. Uh, Americans have a phrase called adaptive reconstruction, which I quite like. Um, internationally, large hotel fires are not as rare as people think. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, they're, they're sort of an everyday occurrence, but there are lots and lots of hotel fires with uh, pretty significant casualty figures. Um, the whole point about hotels, of course, is they, they bring together people in large numbers. Uh, they bring together people speaking different languages, uh, with different cultures and different attitudes and approaches, uh, and they mix that uh, in a high-rise building usually with, uh, with alcohol and, and possibly sleeping pills and God knows what, and we end up with, with multiple casualties. Um, Recognising this, uh, the European Commission, uh, back in 1986, produced uh, its recommendations uh, on hotel fire safety, EC 66686, uh, if you believe in uh, predestination, uh, the number of the beast is an appropriate number for that standard. Um, it recognises the fact that uh, citizens of the Union do travel and are entitled to the same levels of safety uh, wherever they go in the Union. Um, that was the intention. Uh, however, uh, notice it's now 40 years old, this standard, and the time it was uh, developed, few people could have, for example, foreseen uh, a hotel in the tallest building in Europe, uh, the Shangri-La in the Shard. Uh, uh, just as an aside, I was the insurance advisor on that project, and I'm uh, pleased we delivered it with no fires during the project, so quite a, a nice achievement, and, and thank you, FPA, for the joint code. Um, I, I guess the meat of the work that, that, that I've done was basically done for the UK tour operators. Um, thanks to um, um, some support from uh, Nick's uh, partner um, on BBC Watchdog, um, I did a number of programmes for them, and the UK tour operators, whom I had been slagging off, uh, decided to try and bring me into, back into the kennel, uh, and um, they gave me some work to do. And that included reviewing... Uh, over 6,000 individual fire risk assessments of properties used by the tour operators in eight European countries. Um, we, we looked at um, the reports done by consultants, by the TO's own people, and by in-resort staff. And uh, this is fairly staggering figures, that out of the, the total, only 45% complied with, with EC 66686, so 55% non-compliance. Uh, of which 23% were high-risk non-compliance. Um, this report was submitted to, the, to an EC working party in 2008, which was reviewing the, the recommendations. Indeed, um, reviewing the recommendations following significant recommendations from a number of people, including uh, UK fire chiefs, that the recommendations should become a directive. Um, that hasn't happened yet, and the recommendations haven't been reviewed yet. Uh, if you think Westminster works slowly, try Brussels. Um, so what are high-risk indicators, and, and how can we look at fire suppression as a, an aid? Well, the most obvious ones are if you travel to Paris, you'll find lots and lots of uh, three- and four-storey townhouses converted to hotels. Single staircases, often with a, an open lift up the centre of the staircase, uh, those are so common as to be a cliché, yet the Paris Fire Brigade, Sapper Pompier de Paris, uh, will not impose wider standards on the hotels because of pressure from the economic interests in Paris and, and in France to actually impose those standards. Uh, they'd have to close the hotels, effectively. The only approach would be a fire suppression system. Uh, and uh, to be fair, there are some of uh, the chains who are putting in fire suppression in their city-city hotels. Other indicators... Uh, escape routes that wouldn't be suitable in this country, vertical ladders, for example, uh, quite common in Austria, uh, ropes, still quite common in Eastern Europe, 
Um, no alarm systems in properties with ten or more bedrooms, for example. No electric alarms. Uh, gongs or, or hooters or, or uh, handbells. Uh, uh, that's clearly unacceptable. Uh, single open staircases in properties of more than two storeys with corridors of more than 25 metres without any smoke stop doors, so uncompromised corridors. Property with locked and blocked exits, uh, <coughs> cooking in rooms, as in the apart hotels, uh, and poor response uh, by local fire service. Uh, again, I don't mean to be unkind, but if you have a town where the winter population is 5,000 and the summer population is 400,000, uh, clearly the fire brigade is not necessarily going to be increased to meet that requirement during the summer. Uh, some examples here, a hotel I was booked into by the Italian fire brigade in Siena, open staircase and open corridors all the way, no fire stopping whatsoever. Uh, when I explained that as far as I was concerned this was a, a single fire compartment, I had to sit down with a bit of paper and a pencil and draw a fire compartment. So uh, we, we, we should not necessarily assume that we're always worth here. Um, medium risks, corridors more than 30 metres. Uh, Here's a four-star in Hamburg, a 75-metre corridor. Staff training, uh, very uh, much the case in, in holiday resorts where staff turnover is enormous. Uh, in, in Austria, for example, I remember recall the, the manager of one hotel telling me that uh, training his staff would be a waste of time. It would just confuse them. Um, Good answer, I suppose. Uh, no instructions for guests in any language at all. Uh, absent signage, misleading signage. Uh, for example, despite the EU requirements uh, this embodied in the safety signs and signals directive, uh, in Germany you'll still find red fire exit signs which say in German, not Ausgang. Now, you might just tentatively translate that as being no exit, but of course it means emergency exit. Uh, so confusion there. Also in Germany, outward opening bedroom doors in corridors. I find that incredibly confusing. If you're evacuating a hotel, the last thing you want is a heavy fire door being banged in your face as you run down the corridor. It does happen. Um, no emergency lighting, often the case in Greece in particular. Used to be in Portugal, no longer, I'm pleased to say. Uh, southern Italy was bad too with emergency lighting. Uh, the idea just hadn't uh, reached them, I suppose. Defective absent fire systems, and in many places, very poor provision for people with disabilities. Now, I don't necessarily mean wheelchairs here about that sort of disability, but also blindness and, and hard of hearing. Uh, in the north of Europe, very good provision for those things, not so good in the south. Fire suppression systems will compensate for all of these inadequacies very effectively. And this is the, I think the whole brilliant thing about fire suppression systems is they may not be the panacea, uh, according to uh, civil servants, but they are a very good way of taking away the pain uh, when other measures fail. And I think that's my point. And I'm pleased to see that in the interim report, Dame Judith has recognised that sprinklers are a, a very good way of, of dealing with the fact when compartmentation fails. Normal risks are mainly housekeeping issues, blocked escape routes, fire doors wedged open, the usual uh, rubbish accumulating. Four star just up the road from here, uh, blocked escape because of banqueting equipment. They, where do they put it? It's, it's a perennial problem. Um, furniture in, in corridors, especially uh, bedding in stairwells, not uncommon. Uh, one fatal fire in a moat house, I think in Chesterfield, I'm trying, I can't remember where it is, uh, where an elderly couple died in their bedroom when a mattress that had been placed in the corridor was ignited by an arsonist and fell against their bedroom door so they couldn't get out. Uh, that's not uncommon. Uh, in the summer, cribs, cots, uh, truckle beds being placed in corridors, very common. Easily remedied, often on the spot, at little cost. Sometimes the fire safety measures can actually present a hazard. This is a, a four-star in Salou. I arrived uh, the morning of the fire. I was up, further up the coast doing hotel inspections, and they said, can you get out of Salou? There's been a fire, and see what, what's what. And we found that the uh, escape door from the top floor uh, had a in case of fire break glass, a handle behind a glass sheet. Nobody foresee the, fa the fact that people might evacuate from their beds in bare feet. So we had 12 or 13 people with, with cut feet. No casualties from the fire. In fact, the fire was outside the hotel. It was actually smoke sucked into the hotel. 
but uh, it does demonstrate the fact that you have to be careful with provisions. Adaptive reconstruction I mentioned, NFP A914, it commended to you as a standard. Um, the whole point here is that buildings have to earn their keep. An empty building is not earning its keep and will eventually, unless it's found a new use, will be burnt down. It'll be vandalised, it'll be intruded into, you'll get people doing cable stripping, uh, you'll get dossers, you'll get illegal drug taking, shabines, all the other panoply of modern society, and it'll be destroyed. If you can find a new use for it, it will, be, it will survive. Now, that means, of course, the building has to comply with the current building standards, and that means changes to the building. That, in turn, can affect the whole heritage value of the building. If the heritage fabric is disrupted, you lose part of the heritage value. So we need to find ways of ensuring that old buildings can be reused at the same time as being safe under our current standards, providing means of escape, uh, and, and so on. Again, fire suppression is absolutely brilliant for this. Uh, converting you know, an old railway station to an exhibition venue in Manchester uh, couldn't have been done without sprinklers. Uh, I've got a great two-star... Country House is now a university office. Again, couldn't have done without sprinklers because they wanted to build a new fire escape on the back. Uh, the Listil building people said, no, you can't do that, so the project wouldn't have gone ahead. I think the supreme one here is this lovely little cinema, former cinema in Venice, is now a supermarket. Uh, and the whole point of the, the, the fire suppression system is, is, is hidden, it's missed. And the building <coughs> is reversible. The changes can be reversed. They can turn it back into a cinema or a theatre without damage because the supermarket bits are in the aisle, uh, in, in the auditorium, not against the walls. So it can be done. I think perhaps the, the supreme example here is St Pancras uh, Hotel, the Renaissance, um, formerly a the first big railway hotel in, in, in London, um, 1936 out of use because it no longer met standards, not enough bathrooms, not enough loos, and it became offices. It was then virtually abandoned. Um, the tower at this end of the building was set on fire by arsonists, pigeons intruded. Um, I was involved in the uh, 1996 stabilisation survey um, by architects to see if it could be brought back into use. We had to remove a tonne and a half of pigeon guano from inside the building, which is uh, not very pleasant. Uh, that's the dining room restaurant that is now in 96, and it has been retained, unaffected. The presence of water mist makes this project possible. English heritage would not have permitted uh, it to be built, uh, to be altered. Uh, local authority would not have accepted the very long corridors uh, that it's got without fire suppression. So, wonderful. The largest mist system in a hotel at the time, uh, way ahead of our, our current standards, but nevertheless, it's, it's there. Uh, made it possible. Others, water mill to a hotel, uh, nice student accommodation from a hostel here, a, ho a hotel rather near uh, Lime Street Station, country house to a religious retreat, orphanage to art gallery in Edinburgh, and this rather nice cinema uh, to a place of worship. Uh, these all could have benefited from fire suppression systems. There is one here, there is one here, one there and there, but not in this cinema. But the cinema is uh, one of my. I, I have a. I have a think about old 1930s cinemas. I'm sorry, we all have our hobbies. Choices: sprinklers or mist. It's up to you. Uh, no matter how much people say it, it would be good, gas systems will not work. Nor will powder, and foam will, will offer no real benefit. Um, Insurers remain sceptical about mist because of the disparate nature of the market uh, and lack of long-term experience, but it's coming. Uh, mist companies now have certification. There's a, a number of mist installers with an LPS. There's a, a few in FIRAS. Uh, the equipment is beginning to be, start to be uh, uh, certified. And, of course, we now have a British standard. Uh, we'll have a new European standard probably next year. I'm not going to tell you what sprinklers can do. Nick's already mentioned this. I, I would just mention the fact that, that um, firefighter safety is equally important as the safety of the occupants of the building uh, and reduction in fire losses. Uh, my friend Tom, who's not here. Is it Tom? Tom arrived? No. Yeah. Hello, Tom. Tom will tell you more than you need to know about reducing fire losses and, and what they reduce to because he has an interest in reducing fire losses, being an insurer. Um, I'm going to stop there. Uh, why my questions are, uh, and this again follows on from Nick, why is the perceived prejudice 
in the Westminster government against the wide use of sprinklers? Is it because they're only for protection of property? Is it because they're too expensive and without a burden to developers' costs and the government's friends? Or because sprinklers are ineffective? Uh, vote early and vote often, as uh, the Americans say. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.